In the previous sessions, we've learned about vectors and the tools of genetic engineering. Today's session, we learn about biological methods of gene transfer. The first of them being transformation. Naturally, some of the bacteria are capable of transformation. And what is this transformation primarily? Transformation is a process in which a fragment of DNA is taken up by the bacteria naturally and is incorporated into its genome. But this process does not happen in most of the bacteria. Only few of them make it successful. Even in E. coli cells, which are widely used in genetic engineering experiments, this process is not possible. Sometimes even if the transformation occurs, that is the process of taking up the DNA occurs, its integration into the bacterial genome is not possible and this DNA will be degraded by bacterial enzymes. Uh, this phenomenon was artificially induced in E. coli cells and when it was uh, soaked in ice, salt cell solution, the process of uh, DNA being taken up increased rapidly. So they came to a conclusion that the salt such as calcium chloride or sodium chloride can contribute to the uptake of DNA from the external media by altering the pore size of the cell membrane of the bacteria or by altering the ionic charges of the channels and facilitate the uptake of DNA. Later its integration may or may not be possible. That's how they compared on how to induce taking up of DNA in the bacterial cell and to check whether the bacterial cells which have taken up this DNA has integrated this DNA into its chromosome successfully. They generally carried out these experiments using a selectable marker. In the previous sessions we have studied about how antibiotic resistance is used as selectable marker in field of genetic engineering to check if the DNA fragment is taken up by the bacteria. Here the same concept is used. A PBR322, a vector with two antibiotic resistant gene is used to check whether E. coli has taken up the desired gene fragment. This PBR322 is introduced into the genome and if the bacteria has taken up and integrated this PBR322 into its genome, it can grow in antibiotic containing media as the PBR322 has antibiotic resistance genes incorporated in them. If note, if the process of taking up GNA is unsuccessful, then the E. coli that has not taken up the DNA fails to grow in antibiotic prone media. That is the antibiotic is when, when antibiotic is present in the media. However, naturally indu inducing this competent, competent cells, that is ability of making these E. coli cells to take up this DNA can be achieved by the electroporation method or calcium chloride precipitation method where the calcium chloride is added to the cell with the DNA fragment that is supposed to be inserted which alters the membrane capacity to take up the DNA and thus induces multiple competent cells in the medium. Although many competent cells are present, only 1% of them are able to take up this DNA and transform themselves, forming transformed cells. To check which of them have taken up the DNA, this technique is used where PBR322 with antibiotic resistance genes are successfully incorporated into the genome of bacteria and this bacteria which is undergone transformation is grown in antibiotic selective media. If this bacteria is able to successfully reduce this antibiotic resistance gene, then we can conclude that this bacteria is successfully transformed. If not, then it is regarded as untransformed cells.
or non-transformed cells. Another method is the transfection. Here, phage DNA is introduced into the E. coli. We have all known how a phage infects the E. coli. In the previous session, we have known about the M13 phage, which infects the bacterium and a replicative in one of its replicative double stranded form it is very successful and it, it resembles plasmid and it can be handled in the same way as a plasmid is handled in the genetic engineering experiments here this form of m13 is used as cloning vector in e coli cells to introduce desired gene fragments into e coli and even there is something called in vitro packing. Here, the lambda head and tail phage is sometimes very difficult to insert all its genome, insert a desired gene fragment into its genome as its length is very small. So, this can be synthesized artificially. How is it achieved? So, individual proteins required is synthesized artificially and assembled in lab through experiments. The phage particles are assembled in vitro in lab and then allowed to infect. Sometimes this is achieved by considering two phage molecules which are consisting of defective genes but still synthesize all the proteins necessary for assembly of new viron particles. This experiment is used to produce art, uh, artificial, artificially all the required proteins for the assembly of these phage particles. These artificial assembled particles are then infected, uh, are then allowed to infect the bacterium. How is the infection known? Like when lambda, when lambda phage infects the bacterium in the culture, it produces plague kind of structure. Like it, the cells would have undergone lysis in that particular region and under microscope and even in, in the microscopic study, this appears like a vacant, a vacant area. As you see there in the diagram, in the bacterial plate culture, where the colony is present, you can see vacation of that particular colony or a distortion of that colony because of the cells present in that region would have undergone lysis and released these phage particles. This method can be used to know whether the phage is successful in, in infecting the bacterial cell and forming the lytic cycle and releasing its virions. But in M13 phage, as it does not cause the lysis of the bacterium and it slows down the growth of the bacterium when it is causing the infection, the appearance of phage, phage is different as the cell density in that particular area where this M13 phage is infecting is decreased. Here you can see the image how the plague appearance when the lytic infection is seen is different from the plague appearance when M13 phage infection is observed. Here in lytic phage infection, the total cavity where the phage is infecting bacteria is empty because all the bacteria present in that particular region is lysed and the bacteria are dead. Whereas in M13 phage, if the M13 phage is infecting a bacteria, the growth rate of that particular bacteria infected will be reduced. So, its multiplication rate is gradually deteriorating, hence resulting on, in only few particles compared to the rest of the area where the multiplication of the uninfected bacteria remains high. That's how the play carrier between these two plays significant role in emphasizing the difference between these two phage, phage infection cycles. Another method of gene transfer is transduction. Here, the bacteriophage releases its DNA and this DNA 
integrates into the bacterium as we have seen in lysogeny how the phage genome integrates with the bacterial genome but sometimes this cycle actually to integrate its genome degrades certain parts of bacterial genome as we have seen there is no extra space in bacterial genome so to, to insert its genome there must be certain areas in bacterial genome it degrades to accommodate the exact length of its genome so if this is happening after this integration in the prophage stage when another virus infects this specimen the infected primarily infected specimen it can carry that particular region from one bacterium to another when this particular virus which has infected this bacterium is infecting another consecutive bacterium this can carry that particular part of gene sometimes when this exercise excises the dna that is it's when it cuts its own dna it will cut a part of bacterial dna which is again transferred into another bacteria when it is infecting other bacterium this is a type of transfer of genetic material from one bacterium to another through the infection caused by the virus in particularly lysogenic cycle which results in a in the formation of recombinant dna molecule as a part of bacteria as the part of dna from one bacterium is transferred to another accidentally by the virus and it is cutting off its own genome from that infected bacterium there are two types of transductions one is the generalized transduction and the another one is specialized transduction here generalized transduction here the efficient efficiency of packing of genetic material is seen after the phage genome is cut off from the bacterial genome with a part of bacterial genome accidentally how that how is that packaged into the new phage particles that is formed after lytic cycle here that is seen specifically how is that packed and later how the how does that facilitate recombination when it infects another bacterium in specialized case there since the cycle exhibits an alternative form that is lysogeny is required for this form of transduction the dna excised accidentally from the bacterial genome with the with its own genome is regarded as error and the recombination seen by this method has more chances than the generalized method and the part of dna that is cut off is very small as the viral genome is very small it is only 10 kb a part of viral genome is also left off in the bacterium and is replaced by the bacterial genome that particular part is taken into the host of another bacteria that is from one one bacterium to another bacterium so that process is checked in specialized transduction another method of gene tra gene transfer is the conjugation we have seen how a pillus is formed due to the transgenes present in the f plasmid here that part is exploited to in this method transfer of genetic material is by direct cell to cell contact and when the pillus is formed that will pull the bacterium the do the recipient strand towards the donor and inject its genetic material through rolling circle replication where a five where a strand of that is inserted and the bacterium which has received this dna undergoes rolling circle replication and synthesizes a complementary strand required and forms a plasmid this mode of dna transfer is very efficient and has significant role in 
transfer of plasmid from one species to another and sometimes this can occur between two different species thus attributing to greater lengths in genetic recombination. If you find this video informative please do like share and subscribe to our channel. Thank you. If you need more information regarding this aspect check for the link below.